Okay, folks, today I'm going to show you how to replace the hard drive in this Acer with an SSD. The SSD I'm using in this case is a Crucial MX100. Um, this particular one is 512 gigs, uh, but they come in other sizes as well. I'll put a link down below the video where you can read more about this particular drive and a couple other options um, that would work just the same. Okay, let's get started. So what you're going to need is your laptop, an SSD, and a couple of tools. You need a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, you're going to need some kind of flathead screwdriver. I'm just going to use a Swiss Army knife. And nice but not necessary is a pair of tweezers to pick up any screws you drop inside the computer. Uh, this computer is a little bit harder to get open and to work on than some other ones. So um, the tweezers may come in handy, but you know, not a big deal. And then also handy is a container to put all the loose screws in because you'll end up with quite a few. Alright, let's see what we got here. First we'll flip it over. So you have to unscrew the whole bottom panel. There's not just an easy plate uh, that lets you access what you need to access. So you have to take out all these screws and take off the entire bottom of the computer, or rather the top of the computer, but you'll see in a minute. Okay, this last screw here actually doesn't hold on the bottom like the rest. It holds in this uh, thing that looks like a DVD drive. It's actually not a DVD drive, it's just a placeholder. But you'll need to take it out. In order to do that, you'll have to remove this screw. Okay, now with that final screw out, this guy will just slide right out. Okay, we've got all the screws out of the bottom. You would think that it would be easy from here to get the thing open, but now the tricky part actually begins. Uh, there are clips that go all the way around the edge that hold the two sides together, the bottom and the keyboard plate. Um, the bottom doesn't actually come off. It's actually the keyboard that comes off. The bottom and the screen stay connected in one piece. And to get the, bottom, the keyboard off, you have to undo these clips all the way around. And they're quite tricky, but it is doable once you know how to do it. Alright, so you have to pry it open a little bit. You can get it open just a touch. And then you need your flathead screwdriver and you just stick it in here and you would think since the top plate, the keyboard plate has a lip that comes over the bottom you would think that you would have to pull the top forward a little bit to get it to unclip but it's actually the opposite because of the way the clips work. You actually need to pull the bottom forward to get it to unclip. So what you want to do is stick your screwdriver in and then push it over this way and it'll undo the clips. You don't want to stick it in too far because there's electronics that you don't want to go mucking up with your screwdriver and then you just work your way along and then you'll keep hitting more of those clips and you just do the same thing at each one. You want to get your screwdriver over pretty close to where you can feel the clip before you try to flip over like this. And then it'll pop up. <clears throat> Alright. Just go around the whole machine doing the same thing. And there you have a good view of what one of those bottom clips looks like. It's just a little hole there and a slot and then there's a piece underneath the keyboard plate 
that sticks out, a little prong that sticks out from the inside through that hole. <clears throat> All right. Now what you want to do is lay your keyboard back down, your computer back down, keyboard up, and then you can lift the keyboard up. Now you don't want to just lift it up completely because it's still connected by ribbon cables to the circuit board underneath. So let's take a look at that. We need to disconnect some of these ribbon cables so we can get it apart more. Alright, so as I lift it up, I'm just lifting like there's a hinge in the back. And you can see there's a ribbon cable that connects the, the trackpad in this case to the motherboard down here and it limits how far we can open this and then there's another one this one connects the keyboard to the motherboard down here and they're really getting in the way of us doing our job here this one over here is pretty tricky to get apart and it turns out that we can make do with leaving it connected so we're only going to take out these two now you can't just pull them out we're going to want to disconnect from this end you can't disconnect from the other end as easily um, <clears throat> but they don't just pull out because they're locked in place. There are There's a slot here, the black connector that they go into, but then there's um, there's little white pieces of plastic at the top of that connector that are actually locking tabs. You can see them on both of these here. There's one there, there's one over here, and what you have to do is you have to push them up Push them both up and you'll feel them just shift and that will unlock the ribbon cable. You want to push gently but firmly on this thing until you feel it move. And you do that on both sides. You only have to do one at a time. Alright, now once those are both pushed up, the ribbon cable will just pull right out. Alright, now we're going to want to do the same thing on this guy. You can see that it doesn't really want to move until you undo these things which is the whole idea because it would be kind of an annoying if these just came came unconnected while you were using your laptop alright there we go those are both loose now um, this one is long enough that we can leave it in place because it's really hard to undo in this case alright so over here you can see the hard drive that we're going to remove um, here's the motherboard the RAM is actually, annoyingly enough, on the underside of this puppy. So if you want to upgrade the RAM, you have to take the motherboard completely out, flip it over to get to the RAM. Uh, I'll do another video on that, but for now we're just going to stick to the hard drive. Uh, down here, just if you're curious, this is the battery. Um, this is a speaker. This is another speaker. Anyway, here we go. Alright, so now you can lay it back down and lift up the keyboard and just move it over. Now don't go too much. You don't want to pull that ribbon cable too tight, but you can see it gives us enough room where we can get to the hard drive without disconnecting that cable. Alright, so now at this point the hard drive is only held in by I think it's one screw. Um, Alright, over here you see a gray cable that comes over and connects into the motherboard right here. This is to drive the, the LCD, the screen. Um, you don't have to disconnect it for this, but you do have to get this cable out of the way because it's blocking the screw. You want to be careful, this guy. It's wrapped with um, a metallic insulation that uh, I think is just to cut down on uh, RF interference. So you don't, want to, you don't want to cut the insulation by mistake. You just have to move it out of the way. And then you can see there's a screw right here. And that's the screw we need to take out, so I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, now this is where our tweezers come in handy because the screw is loose, but it's kind of hard to get your hand in there to grab that thing. So I'll just pick it up with these tweezers. Alright. Now you'll notice this screw is silver and all the other ones for the case are black so you want to remember which one is which when it comes time to put it together because they're not the same. Alright now we can just lift up over here and you can see that it wiggles. 
It's still connected over here. It plugs into the motherboard with this connector. So we're going to want to pull it loose. We have to pull the drive out this way. But there's pieces of plastic in here that are blocking the way. So you want to lift up a little bit, but not too much because you don't want to break this connector. Just lift up enough to clear the plastic. And then you can just wiggle it back and forth. And it should just slide right out. And then once it's out, you can lift it away. And that's the only thing connecting it. All right, now it's in this little sled. It's uh, screwed in over here and over here. Uh, so we have to take out those screws and then put the new hard drive in the little sled that will anchor back into the machine. So when you're taking it out, you want to remember which way the connector is facing so that you can put the drive in, the new drive in the sled in the correct orientation because it will bolt in either way. If you put it in this way though, you'll see the connectors are facing the opposite direction and you won't be able to plug it back into the computer. So you're going to want to put the drive in this way in this case. See the connectors are oriented the same. Alright, here we go. Let's take this thing out. Well, actually it looks like it's still held in by two tabs on either side that just have little indentations that press into screw holes. There's screw holes there too, but I guess they're just trying to save money on a couple screws, so it still holds in a little bit. You have to pull the tab out a little bit to get it to come out. Alright, there we go. There's our old drive. Put that aside and put in the new one. Those little indentations pop into the same slots on the new drive. Now we'll just screw it back in. Alright, now with that screwed back in there, we can just reverse the process. Alright, so now you want to Put it in going underneath this gray cable here, being careful not to mess it up. And you just line up the connectors here. And I've got the back end lifted a little bit. And then you just push forward and press down here at the same time. And it should just go all the way in there. And you'll feel when it's in place. And now we need to put that screw back in. Okay, now we've installed the SSD and we just have to put everything back together. Um, so we want to put this cable back underneath its little uh, holders to keep it out of the way. Slide our keyboard back over. And then we need to reconnect those ribbon cables. Okay. I'm going to start with the wide one because it's a little bit trickier than the skinny one. So you just line it up and okay it might make, make sense to make sure these little white plastic tabs are pushed forward because they'll block it from going back in as well if they're not pushed forward. So now we'll just slide this back in and you should see that it will go in almost to this white line here, this little white line. Alright, and once it's in there, you need to hold it in place while you push the little locking tabs back down. And once those are in, once those are pushed back down, your ribbon cable is pretty tight. Alright, now we want to do the same thing with our narrow cable. First push the locking tabs forward to make sure they haven't locked on us. Then push this guy in. This will go in to the black line. I don't know if you can see it there. There's a black line at the end of the little silver fingers. So the silver fingers should be pretty much uh, all the way in there out of sight. Now we push the locking tabs down to lock it back in place. And our ribbon cables are secured. And it might make sense to uh, look at this one, just make sure it hasn't been yanked out of place while you're working on things. 
If it has, it's got the same locking tab thing as well, but this locking tab is much harder to pull in and out. That's why I opted to just leave it in place. But you should check that, make sure it's connected still before you put everything back together. All right, now we just want to put our keyboard back down and go around and snap it back together. And this, this time all you really have to do is just push it until you hear it pop. Just squeeze it together. Alright, it's all popped back together, now you just close the lid, flip it over, and put the screws back in. Alright, now this screw you want to wait and put that in after you put your CD drive placeholder back in. Otherwise you won't be able to put it in all the way. Okay, so slide that in there. Put in this final screw. And we're done. Okay, now there's a couple things here that we're left with. The old hard drive. I mean, you could just throw it away, but that's a waste. You could keep it as a backup in case your SSD dies. You could put this guy back in and it will essentially restore your computer back to the point uh, where it was before you installed the SSD. So it's a cheap, like, one-time snapshot backup. Or you can make use of it. I mean, it seems kind of a waste to me to have this perfectly good drive just sitting here. Um, but in order to do that, obviously you just can't use it the way it is. You'll need to put it in an enclosure. This one is really neat. Um, the drive just pops right into it and it plugs into your computer with USB. It's USB 3.0, which is three, uh, I'm sorry, 10 times faster than USB 2.0, so it's quite quick. Um, and it's really easy to work with. Uh, there's no power brick to lug around. It gets its power just off the USB cable that's plugged into your computer. Um, there's no tools involved to open it up and put in the drive. You just push it, I think, in this direction, and it, the top just pops off. And then you'll see there's a connector in there that's the same as this connector. You just line it up. Bam! And you don't even have to screw the drive in place because when you put this back on, there are these foam pads on either side that just squeeze it in so that it won't move around at all. And easy as that. External drive, no problem. Just as a fallout from upgrading. You get a free external drive, basically. Um, yeah, and this thing, this ex external enclosure was real cheap. I forget how much I paid for it, but it was not much. It's a Inatech uh, USB 3.0 portable enclosure. I'll put a link down below the video where you can read more about this thing if you're interested. Um, but yeah, this is a great way to make use of your now useless drive. And I'll also put a link where you can read more about the SSD I used. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. I also did um, a video review of this laptop, but I have a feeling if you're watching this video, you already have this laptop, otherwise you're just a really curious person, and good for you, that's awesome. But if you're curious in uh, learning more about this laptop, I did a review, so you check out my other videos, and um, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Bye.